This is our introduction to nodal degrees of freedom where we really want to emphasize the difference between the node itself and the degrees of freedom which that node can possibly move in. So the main question is, what is the degree of freedom? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at a bird. This is actually meant to be an indigo bunting that I was able to recently see when I was bird watching with my father-in-law. Pretty awesome bird. It takes a while to draw though, so we're just gonna go ahead and go through that quickly. Let's say the bird itself, that could represent the node. Now this bird can move in three directions along each of these three axes. That would correspond to three degrees of freedom right there. The bird itself is the node. Where that bird can move corresponds to the degrees of freedom. So we're, here we have the three translations along each of those three axes. And we also have the possibility that this bird could change its orientation by rotating about each of these axes. For example, if that bird wanted to face us, it might rotate about the y-axis. Okay, so drawing the bird again, we know that there are three independent directions that this bird can move in. No matter where that bird moves, it can be written as a superposition of these three directions. It could also rotate in a long, or probably rotate about three independent axes. And so that gives us a total of six total degrees of freedom for a three dimensional problem. All right. So now the next question is, well, how does this apply to finite element analysis? Well, that's a good question. Let's go ahead and take a look at a finite element analysis problem in two dimensions. So simple frame structure here. Let's go ahead and assume that we apply a load there and there is our resulting deformed configuration there with that dashed purple line. And we're gonna say that each of these nodes can do the following. It can translate in the X direction. It can translate in the Y direction. And it can rotate about the Z axis that Z axis is our out of plane axis. So it's in plane rotation, rotating about the out of plane axis. So note that in that problem, each of those nodes had multiple ways that it can move. How it can move, that is the degree of freedom. And the node itself is separate from that degree of freedom because each node can have multiple ways that it can move, multiple degrees of freedom. The de following reflection questions are, what is the difference between a node and a degree of freedom? How many possible degrees of freedom does a node have for a three-dimensional analysis, for a two-dimensional analysis, and for a one-dimensional analysis? And let's say that we have a line element along the x-axis. Which degrees of freedom have stiffness if this line element is a truss element? How about if it's a frame element? And let's assume that this is for a two-dimensional analysis. And with those reflection questions, that concludes our introduction to the nodal degrees of freedom, really trying to emphasize the difference between those degrees of freedom and the nodes themselves. Thank you.